Ian Duncan Smith in Harlow, in Mecca Bingo. What brings you to Bingo today? Well, Robert uh, Halfon brought me to the, uh, the Bingo. He's been running a campaign, as you know, to lower the tax and costs, tax burden on bingos, bingo halls. Uh, and uh, I came to see it because, of course, in the budget he won and we got a lower tax. And the result of that, uh, they were saying to me they intend to invest more, expand more. They've cut the cost of the game from £10 to £3.50. And what's very good is they're employing two more people directly as a result of the lowered cost. So it's been a major success and I've always secretly harboured the idea to have a go at doing some bingo calling. So I just enjoyed that as well. Um, Robert, we're not, I haven't come here to praise Robert Halfen, if you know what I mean, but no. he has tuned in to a certain psyche and an aspiration in Harlow, um, as many people in Harlow say, and others have this. Do you think yeah. that's something that all uh, Conservative MPs have done and succeeded in? Well, everybody to their own extent uh, tries to work very hard as an MP and to be in touch and in tune with their own constituencies. Uh, there is no question that uh, you know, Robert's commitment to his constituency of Harlow is second to none. I frankly don't can't tell you anybody else that is more committed to a constituency than Robert. He brings them to Parliament with him. He never forgets where he comes from, he never forgets his constituency, he never forgets his constituents. So all their concerns and interests are always brought up. You know, the fuel duty escalator, Robert was the one campaigning against that quite rightly to try and stop us raising that so that people actually now pay less for petrol than they would have done directly as a result of their constituency MP. And the same goes uh, for the bingo taxes, there are plenty of other campaigns as well. My point is, you know, Robert's a supporter of the government. He was the uh, parliamentary private secretary uh, to the Chancellor, uh, which is a very important position. And at the same time, uh, he campaigns, notwithstanding all of that, uh, to ensure that his constituents get the best deal. So I think it's a, it's a good win-win for constituents in Harlem. You appear to become a bit of a maligned man, or a, mis or a misunderstood oh. uh, man uh, <laughs> to some people. Do you think that's fair? <coughs> Well, I'm not aware that I was, but I mean, if you say so. I mean, for people who uh, don't, who oppose everything that I've been doing on welfare reform, well, that's fine because uh, they're wrong, uh, and I have set out in the last five years to reform welfare so that we don't trap so many people on dependency, uh, so many people on benefits, that we move them from welfare dependency into work, uh, and the results of all of that, you know, I'm not saying these aren't easy decisions but they certainly are decisions that have to be taken. And the reforms I've brought through have actually not only saved the uh, taxpayer money, they've saved over 50 billion from the welfare budget in the course of the last five years, but more importantly than that, I think they've actually saved lives because what we've got is people now going back to work in record numbers. So more people going back to work, more people with disability back to work, more women with back to work, and also just overall the highest proportion of people in work ever before. And by the way, these are not low level jobs something in the order of about 80% uh, of these jobs are actually full-time jobs and 60% of them are all managerial level, white collar level. So these are all good jobs and every job is better than not uh, having something to do every day because you build and develop yourself. So these reforms have begun to really change the face of Britain and the most significant reform figure I want to give you is this. Of those who live in social housing, the proportion of households who live in social housing the proportion in work now is higher than it's ever been since records began. These are many families who never held work or had been out of work for some significant time now back in work. That's a real life changer. So if people who are against all of this malign me, then I'm very happy for that because they always say you can judge yourself by those who are your enemies. I just want to talk a little bit about youth unemployment um, yep. because there's basically statistics have come out showing that it's, it's largest gap from national unemployment for 20 years. I mean. Um, You've talked about compassion being yep. too soft in the past. I mean, what will it take to stimulate job growth in 16 to 24 year olds? Well, it's happening already. I mean, the point was, let's just get the perspective of this. You know, we hit the worst recession. When the last government left in 2010, we had just gone through the worst recession. And I mean the worst recession since records began. Um, you know, in my lifetime, I can't recall it. The economy fell by over 6% <coughs> in GDP terms. You know, that was a staggering collapse. And of course, the people that got perhaps the hardest hit on that were young people, because they were often the last people into work. So they were invariably the first people to be let go because they hadn't had all as much training as somebody aged 30 or 40 or whatever. So, you know, they tended to have taken a lot of the brunt of that. We made it as one of our priorities to uh, increase uh, investment in apprenticeships. Yeah. I've done a huge amount to try and get work experience. I opened up a new work experience program inside all the job centres so that we continue to pay benefits if they get a work experience post for a month or two months. 
over half of those who took those work experience places have now gone back into work. We've actually seen long-term youth unemployment falling. We know that youth unemployment now is lower than it was in 2010 and on a downward trend. So we're doing the right things, we've just got to do more of it. Uh, I'm very keen to do more to try and get more companies to open up their doors to young people to do more work experience. That's a huge start forward, but that work experience has been a staggering success and the apprenticeship programs have been a staggering success. We're going to commit to another three million of those. So there's good news coming down the road for young people, uh, but the most important thing is we stay with the plan because that plan is developing jobs and it's those jobs that I can now get young people into. Okay, and then just one final one. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Class War, um, oh, yes. they've, um, they're looking, they've, they've put a candidate against you. In, they've, yes. they've only got nine candidates, and they've, yeah. they've quoted, they're saying they're throwing everything against Ian Duncan Smith, yeah. as a lot of people don't like him. Well, don't like a lot of people very much, and they're not at all representative of what I call the normal voting public. Why? Because their absurdity and the way they believe about what should be done, they actually want to see people trapped on benefits. They would rather see them stuck on benefits, not working. Uh, that is their program. And I have to tell you, I don't agree with them. I think we've been right. For those people who have got work and got jobs as a result of my welfare reforms, those people now are living better lives, uh, they're more fulfilled lives, and they're able at last to pay for the things they need but they're doing it because they were working, not because they had to be dependent on the state. And I think that's a plus and a positive, uh, and I'm very happy the class will stand in my area. It's not a problem to me at all. <laughs> I just think Labour are less happy about that. <laughs> okay. okay.